Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Northeast. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrien Ag Solutions. We'll be another quiet three or four days uh, across the Northeast region here before we have to talk about a storm system over the weekend. As we look at things here on Tuesday morning, we've got a storm system making its way through parts of the Central and Southern Plains. Winter weather advisories in effect across parts of the High Plains, Colorado, Kansas, the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, the winter storm warning in effect across the Dodge City, Kansas area into parts of northwest Oklahoma. We've also got a winter weather advisory across parts of southeastern Kansas into south and central Missouri, and that storm system will continue to make its way off to the east-southeast over the next 24 to 48 hours. There is the storm system as we look at the infrared satellite picture here on Tuesday morning, the counterclockwise flow around that area of low pressure. And again, the radar associated with that. We've got rain, perhaps a couple embedded thunderstorms across east Texas into Oklahoma. And then on the north side here, that's where we've got a very heavy wet snow, four to seven inches of snow possible here across parts of southwest Kansas. As we go ahead and look at temperatures across the region, mid 30s, lower 30s across the northeast region. Again, with northwest, northwest flow, excuse me, coming across the lakes here, some isolated pockets of snow flurries possible over the next 24 to 48 hours, but nothing large scale in the uh, way of precipitation here on the backside of our departing storm system that impacted the region over the last day or two. Looking at the high resolution NAM model, we can take a look at the precipitation forecast here. And again, we watch this storm system making its way off to the east, southeast. The area of low pressure actually drifts off toward the Gulf Coast here, drifting across the, uh, uh, the Florida Panhandle as we get into uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. And as it begins its east, southeast journey here, going to kind of run out of steam as far as moisture goes, uh, unless you get really far south across, again, the Gulf Coast region here, uh, those showers and storms limited to uh, areas of southern Alabama, Georgia, and the panhandle of Florida as we get into Wednesday night and Thursday. So not a storm system that's going to be making any noise here across the northeast region, except for maybe a couple light snow flurries across southern Pennsylvania into New Jersey. Total snowfall forecast here through Thursday at midnight, getting us into Friday morning possible that we could see some snow flurries here perhaps stacking up an inch or two in the higher elevations here of western and central new york some of the flow coming off the lakes there uh, perhaps delivering some very light snow but large scale looking at a dry next 24 to 48 hours across the northeast region here's the total liquid precip uh, precipitation uh, liquid equi equivalent uh, during that time frame and again very light precipitation expected maybe a tenth of an inch on the the high end here where we could get some lake influence across portions of uh, northern and uh, central in New York. So the reason for the quieter pattern uh, is because we've got relatively uh, weak flow, weak and disorganized flow in the upper levels of the jet stream here across the lower 48 across North America. You can find a very strong patch of jet stream winds here across the Gulf of Alaska that is moving toward the British Columbia and uh, Pacific Northwest area. We'll begin to blast that region with some precipitation here as we head into the middle part of the week. But we really have to head into the end of the week before we start to see any major changes across the lower 48. What does that look like? Well, over the next 24 to 48 hours, watching very weak storm systems, kind of weak uh, upper level lows that are kind of just displaced from the stronger jet stream winds, diving across the southwest U.S. and then moving across uh, the southern U.S., kind of taking a, a trajectory like that. Here's one uh, storm system. Let me go ahead and uh, get that uh, more accurate there across south Texas. We're looking at midnight tonight, another one kind of rounding the bend here in Southern California. So you watch these systems kind of just broken off from the stronger jet stream winds diving across the Southern US. Then as we get into the weekend, now we're at Saturday morning watching a jet streak right now diving across the Great Lakes. This one could bring some light snow to the Great Lakes Friday and Saturday. And then it begins to uh, amplify and become a little more well-defined as it swings into the Northeast region. And now. We've got some disagreement on how this is really going to evolve, but it does look like we'll have a storm system to talk about across the northeast region here that could bring some wintry impacts, some rainfall, and then perhaps some uh, windy conditions as well as that storm system intensifies. But specific impacts a bit unclear right now uh, because of some of the uncertainties we have within this forecast. So we'll look at the 500 millibar vorticity plot. And again, the shaded regions, the areas of vorticity, that's where we've got spin in the atmosphere and that helps us diagnose areas that we could have a uh, low pressure at the surface and uh, we could also have cloud cover and precipitation so this is a very useful tool a very useful plot for us to watch and again very disorganized uh, a flow across the region right now so we've got uh, the, the storm system across the central and southern plains here we've got a wave making its way across the pacific northwest those are pretty well defined here's departing area of low pressure here moving across uh, off the uh, the coast of maine now off toward the, uh, the north atlantic and then you've got all these little subtle waves here uh, back across the uh, the Great Lakes. 
getting into the Canadian Prairie. You've got a big uh, kind of streak coming off the tail of that Southern Plains area of low pressure. And so uh, really just kind of disorganized flow, but lots of opportunities for these little clippers, especially across this region, moving from the Northwest to the Southeast, just to bring enough disruption to kick off some snow flurries, very light snow perhaps, but again, a relatively quiet four or five days across the region. It's as we get into Saturday, you're watching this stronger wave come pushing in here across the Canadian Prairie as we get through the day on Friday, swinging into the Northeast region now, beginning to deepen and dig across the region during the weekend. But we see a couple of different parts here. If I kind of step through, you're seeing two kind of uh, areas of low pressure, this trough here, this trough there. Let's go ahead and bring it back, watching where these pieces come from. We've got a lead wave that pushes into the region across the southern portion of the region here, late Friday into Saturday. Then this wave comes in on the backside, kind of kicking that out. Uh, but we could, could see a phasing here, which would lead to a, a more well-defined solution, perhaps a stronger solution. Right now with them out of phase, we're seeing it a little bit weaker down at the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, skip past the 850 millibar plot and go straight into the precipitation plot, the, the precipitation type and surface pressure. Watching for the light snow flurries across the region here as we head through the next 24 hours or so. Those should come to an end uh, as we get into uh, Wednesday and Thursday as the flow is not going to really be supportive of those snow flurries across the region. So quiet Wednesday, Thursday into Friday. Then we start to watch for that storm system late Friday into Saturday. Here's the lead wave. That area of low pressure begins to deepen once it's off the coast, off the Atlantic coast with the, uh, the, the wave behind it kind of out of sync. If we were to see these come in together, that's what gives you the, the more well-defined area of low pressure across the Northeast region with the very strong flow around it. I'm getting excited drawing this hypothetical storm system, but with the two waves out of sync right now, we watch for a couple of uh, potential waves of precipitation here, but uh, this does not lead to uh, you know any sort of crippling snow, blizzard conditions or anything like that, unless we see some change in the forecast here and get these waves uh, phasing together. So looking likely we'll see precipitation across the region as we get into late Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday, lingering perhaps uh, into Monday here on the backside with snow flurries still possible into the early part of the week. We're then watching another potential storm system. Big question marks with this one as we get into the middle part of the week. This could again be a storm system that lifts into the northeast region, but question marks on how that evolves across the midsection of the country. So uh, my message to you in the northeast region, you got a relatively quiet next uh, three to four days, the opportunity for some light snow flurries here over the next 24 hours, uh, but then quieting down Wednesday, Thursday, and much of Friday, late Friday, Saturday into Sunday. We do have a storm system moving across the area. Understand there's uncertainty within that forecast. Check back in uh, with the, the forecast we post here each morning, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, as we kind of dissect uh, the phasing of those two waves, trying to understand if we're gonna have a, a more well-defined storm system across the region. Still plenty of time for that to happen. Right now, looking a little bit less organized, a little more sloppy across the region. Taking a look at the total precipitation forecast then, all the way through Sunday, midday, watching again, quiet, as we head through much of the week, I'll go ahead and pause, stepping through time, bringing it back to today, seeing the opportunity for that light snow as we have flow coming across the lakes here. Uh, light snow flurry is possible, but relatively light precipitation. Shutting it down Wednesday, Thursday into Friday. You're not seeing any additional uh, precipitation stacking up here until we get into late Friday into Saturday and Sunday. That's when we start to stack up the precipitation. But again, with the waves being out of phase, not looking at a big soaker, not looking at any uh, you know significant precipitation across uh, the inland portions of the northeast region, but there is time for that to change. It's something we just have to watch. Here's the uh, the, the two forecasts side by side: the European on the left, the American GFS on the right. The GFS model a little bit wetter across the northeast region, a little bit uh, more together with the phasing on those two waves right now. We're just going to have to watch how this evolves, though, between the two models. We can look at the snowfall forecast, ensemble forecast through Tuesday. We're looking at the probability of three inches or more of snow accumulating, again, through next Tuesday, February 4th. If you look at the two sides here, maybe a little bit more gung-ho, but pretty good agreement here with the snow being most likely as we uh, get closer to uh, the lakes in western New York, uh, portions of north central New York, where we could have some influence uh, from the lakes and the higher elevations there, and then northward across New Hampshire, Vermont and Maine, uh, you see those higher probabilities. Uh, but again, not looking at a crippling snowstorm here. You really got to head toward the lake influence or the higher elevations if you even want to get those higher probabilities of uh, three inches or more of snow accumulating. Now, we do have to talk about the change that will uh, be happening with the jet stream here. And again, we'll bring it back here, stepping through time, watching for 
Uh, as we get into the weekend, that wave to move through, uh, the trough deepening across the region. On the backside, though, cold does not linger for long. We do quickly kind of resume a, a trough in the west with a ridge in the east uh, as we get into Monday and Tuesday of early next week. But then that's when we could see the potential for another central U.S. storm system to begin developing, perhaps an area of low pressure across the central plains that could swing through the northeast region, bringing another wave of cooler temperatures with it on the backside. So what do our temperature anomalies look like? Well, a little bit of everything. We fl fluctuate uh, between warmer and cooler anomalies over just the next seven days as we start off the week a little above average, dropping down below average here as we head into the Wednesday and Thursday time frame. Uh, as we watch that next storm system make its way in Friday into Saturday, we'll see temperatures once again fluctuate back warmer than average. And then as we talk about the trough developing in the, uh, the west with ridging across the east, uh, into the middle part of next week, warmer air does make its way into the region, but then as the trough shifts off to the east, cooler temperatures come in on the back side. What do our high temperatures look like over the just the next few days? We'll go ahead and bring this back pretty steady over the next several days, again with relatively uh, you know um, disorganized flow across the region. High temperatures for the day today, mid-20s in the north, near 40 degrees across the south. Similar story for the day Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you see that that freezing line not really even fluctuating much until we get into the late part of the week. Now we're seeing that warming trend Friday into Saturday, warmer still as we get into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Now we can see temperatures in the 40s as far north as portions of New, uh, New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, and southern Maine. Taking a look at low temperatures, again, not going to see a lot in the way of fluctuation over the next four or five days. Those overnight lows near uh, the, the teens here across northern Maine. Uh, but elsewhere pretty much in the mid 20s to near 30 degrees dropping a little bit cooler for the morning tomorrow single digits in the north on thursday morning and then we uh, start to warm back up as we head into friday saturday and sunday with those lows creeping above freezing as you head off toward the south